Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're having a look at a massive record. We're checking out Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. Now I know this is a lot of people's favourites and it's mine as well and I think it appears on just about every Martin Scorsese film there is. So we want to make sure we get it right. It's really really iconic. We're going to spend the entirety of part number one breaking down the introduction and I can't tell you the amount of times I've listened to this record over the past month so hopefully you really enjoy it. Anyway I've got a massive thank you to Paul, Shane, Daniel, Chris T and Chris G who are my latest Patreon followers. If you'd like to get involved in the channel and vote on my next lesson please click the link below to my Patreon page and check it out. And with that in mind give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. <laughs> Before we begin, let me just run you through the sound. So today I'm using a Les Paul with humbuckers, but if you've got a semi hollow body guitar or a fully hollow body guitar, that will be absolutely perfect for this particular song. Let's talk about the overdrive then. We're going to want a very subtle gain sound throughout the entire thing. I'm going to be using my usual combination of a DoD looking glass, which is a nice low and clean sounding overdrive pedal combined with an exotic super sweet boost pedal. Now I'm going to have slightly lesser settings for the rhythm guitar and then bump them up for the lead guitar. For the rhythm guitar, first of all I'm going to flick the switch onto the low gain setting and then dial that in to about 10 o'clock. I'm then going to put the bass at 12 o'clock and the treble at 3 o'clock. For the lead guitar, I'm going to bump those settings up. I'm going to put the gain from 10 o'clock all the way up to 5 o'clock and then the bass from 12 to 3 o'clock and then the treble from three to about five o'clock. And those are the only effects I'm really using. Other than that, I'm adding in a bit of reverb from the amp. Let's start by having a look at the introduction rhythm guitar. And before we get any further, we need to alter the tuning of our guitar. We need to change it from E standard into open E. Now that means when you play the open strings together, they're gonna to sound like an E major chord. And the notes of E major are E, G sharp and B. So we need to change a couple of the strings here. The A string needs to come up a whole tone from A to B. The D string needs to come up a whole tone from D to E. And the G string needs to come up a half from G to G sharp. The rest of it should be fine and it will sound like this. Feel free to pause the video now. I'll give you a moment to get your guitar adjusted. Now that we've got our guitars adjusted, let's talk about the introduction. This is probably the most iconic bit of the song. On the record, it's played with tremolo, but today, for the purposes of teaching, I'm not gonna be using any, and hopefully that will help you get a clearer picture of how to play it and help you understand it a bit better. As well as that, it will also reassure those of you who don't have any tremolo pedals that it will still sound great live without any of it. Let's have a look at the example first, and then I'll break it down. <laughs>
then let's break the introduction down into four parts. I'm going to start by showing you the mechanics of it first and then we're going to talk about the theory afterwards. We're going to start with part number one and that just sounds like this. <laughs> And for this, we are going to be starting up at the ninth fret of our A. And we're going to follow that by playing the ninth of the D, letting both of those notes ring out. At this point, we're going to bring in our middle and ring finger onto the fretboard. We're going to put our ring finger at the 11th of the D and middle finger to the 10th of the G. And we're going to play those notes together. So we have this. I'll just play that again. We're then going to go back to the ninth of the A a second time and then immediately go back to our two fingers on the 10th and 11th frets. We're then going to go back to the ninth of the A a third time and then we'll move over to the ninth of the D. And then we're going to play the ninth of the D and tenth of the G together. So all together we should have this. And I'll just play that again. From here we can move into our second position which is going to be starting at the 7th of the A, then bringing our two fingers back onto the fretboard, this time it will be 9th of the D and 8th of the G and we're going to go back and forth between the two three times. We're then going to take our ring finger off of the D string and play the 7th of the D and 8th of the G together. So we have this. So far we've got this. From here we can move into our third position which is going to be down at the 5th of our A. And from here we can put our pinky finger or ring finger or both on the 7th of the D and G. And then we're going to play the 5th of the D and G together. And we're going to cycle through that three times. So 5th of the A, 7th of the D and G, 5th of the D and G. So far we've got this. To finish off part number one, we're going to play the 7th of the D and G again with our pinky finger. And then switch back up to the 7th of the A. Bringing our two fingers back on to the 9th and 8th frets of our D and G. We'll then take them off playing the 7th of the D and G. And then the 7th of the A an extra time. So the end of that sounds like this. And I'll just play that again. All together, part number one sounds like this. Number two is going to be very familiar. We're just going to have some small changes. For our first position, we're going to do this. And that's going to be ninth of the A, then ninth of the D and G together. Then we're going to bring our two fingers on, 11th and 10th frets of the D and G, and we'll go back and forth between playing that and the ninth of the A three times.
We're then going to finish that by taking those off and playing the ninth of the D and G again. Our second position is almost going to be the same as well. We're going to start with the seventh of the A or the seventh of the A and D. Everything else is going to be the same. Position number three is going to sound exactly how we did it in part number one and that should wrap up part number two. We're going to play through that entire sequence twice. So we have this. As we move into part number three, we're going to shake things up now and change the riff slightly. We're going to play this. This time we're going to be starting at the ninth of the A, D and G or just the ninth of the D and G, whatever you prefer at this point. And we're going to play those together twice. We're then going to bring our middle finger onto the tenth of the G, again keeping our index finger on the ninth of the A and D, or just the D string, and we're going to play those together another two times. We're then going to bring our pinky finger over to the 12th of the G, still keeping that index finger anchored on the 9th fret, and we're going to play that once, and then go back to the 10th of the G, playing that once as well. So we have this. We're then going to take our middle finger off and play it another two times. without the A string. We're then going to do the exact same thing two frets below in our second position at this seventh fret. So together we have this. We're now going to move into our third position and we're going to have a slight variation here. We're going to go to the fifth of the A like usual, but then we're going to go to the fifth of the D and G before going into our cyclical pattern. So we have this. I'll just do that again. So all together, part number three sounds like this. We're now gonna round things up with part number four and that should just sound like this. Once again, we're going to be starting at the 9th fret, A string, D string, and G string. And we're going to be strumming this position now. We're going to bring our two fingers back on 11th of the D, 10th of the G. And then taking them off again. We're 
we're then going to do the exact same thing in our second position at the seventh fret only when we take our fingers off at the end we're going to leave our middle finger on the eighth of the G so we have this so together We're then going to move into our third position, fifth of the A, and we're going to do two cycles. And then we've got this ending motif, which is featured quite heavily in the song. And that's going to be open E string, open A string, open D string, and open G string, if you like. And then we'll be putting our entire index finger across all the strings at the fifth fret and then repeating that. Then we'll do the same thing at the seventh fret and then slide up to the ninth. Again, part number four sounds like this. Together, the introduction rhythm guitar sounds like this. we've got an understanding of the mechanical elements of the introduction let's take a moment to try to get to grips with the theory side of things now I appreciate a lot of you will be more advanced in theory than others so I will try and explain this as clearly as I can please feel free to drop me a message if you've got any questions about it so the entire song including the introduction is revolving around this progression which is C sharp major B major and A major and up until this point, we've only really known it as our first position, i.e. the ninth fret, our second position, the seventh fret, and the third position, our fifth fret. So we're now gonna call this C sharp major, B major, and A major. With the introduction, we're really focusing on three strings, the A string, D string, and G string. So right off the bat, we're changing the major bar chord into a major triad, so a three note major chord. And that's made up of the first, third, and fifth notes of each of their major scales. Now, these aren't just major triads, they're also inverted major triads. So again, some background knowledge here, you need your first, third, and fifth. 
but if you have the third as the lowest note instead of the first, then it becomes a first inversion. And if you have the fifth as the lowest note in that triad, it then becomes a second inversion. And we, for this progression, have got a second inversion C sharp major, second inversion B major, and second inversion A major. So that's the first thing you really need to understand theoretically about the construction of this one. The second thing that happens, which is interesting, is that we add in our middle finger and ring finger to the fretboard. We've got the 10th of the G and 11th of the D. And you can quite clearly hear that the quality of the chord changes. And we've changed our triad now. We've taken out the first and third notes of our triad, just leaving the fifth. And we've changed the first and third to the second and fourth which means we've now got a C-sharp, sus4, sus2 chord. And that same theory applies for our B major. So that then becomes a B, sus4, sus2. Now it's slightly different for our third position for our A major and you'll notice the chord shape is actually different as well. And we are gonna call that A sus2 flat five, and the flat five note is the G string there, seventh fret. The last variation we need to talk about is this riff. And for that, we've got the ninth of the A and D and then middle finger on the 10th of the G. And that is simply a straightforward sus4 chord. So C sharp sus4. When we put our pinky finger over to the 12th of the G, it then becomes a C sharp five chord. Otherwise known as a C sharp power chord. And again, you can apply the exact same theory to our B major chord at the seventh fret. So B sus4 and then B5. And that's all of the interesting elements theory-wise to talk about. If you've got any questions about any of that, please do ask me in the comments below. And with that in mind, let's move on to the next section. Let's now have a look at the lead guitar for the introduction. And the first thing we need to do is to get our guitars retuned back to E standard. I think there's so much lead guitar in the entire song, the easiest way to tackle it is to do it in standard tuning. I'm gonna run the example once again and hopefully that'll give you some time to get readjusted and then I'll walk you through it. <laughs> we are going to break this down into six easily digestible parts starting with part number one we've got this so we've got nice humble beginnings we're going to start at the 12th of the B and then moving our ring finger over to the 14th playing that twice And I should also just mention, we're about four bars into the song at this point. We're gonna let that ring out for just a moment. We're then gonna go back to the 12th of the B and then bring our middle finger over to the 13th of the G. Once again, letting that ring out. We 
We're then gonna play the 14th of the G, letting that ring out. And then go to the 11th of the G, either hammering onto the 13th or just playing the 13th. And that wraps up part number one really nicely. Once again, it goes like this. And one more time. Part number two is gonna sound like this. So slightly more tricky this time, we're going to start with a bit of string jumping. We are going to play the 14th of the D with our middle finger and then go back to our 12th of the B and then 14th twice. So that's middle then index and ring finger. We're then going to jump over to the 13th of the G playing that twice, bending it up and then bringing it down. And I'll just play that from the start of part number two. At this point, we're then gonna move over to the B string, 12 to 14. We're then gonna pause and then do the same thing again, 12 to 14. And then we'll go back to the 13th of the G, playing it once, bending it up and down. So all together, part number two sounds like this. So far, parts one and two together go like this. Moving into part number three, we've got this. So getting a little bit more tricky again. So we're gonna start once again at the 14th of the D, then 12th of the B playing the 14th twice. After letting that ring out, we'll then play the 14th of the B again, moving back to the 12th. And straight into a bend on the 13th of the G, and I like to use my middle finger with that one, and we're just gonna go up and down. Afterwards, we're gonna return to the 14th of the D, very quickly moving over to the 12th of the B. And then the 14th. So far, part number three, we've got this. We're then gonna return once again to the 14th of the D, and then to the 12th of the B, to the 14th, to the 12th, and do three bends on the 13th of the G, up and down. All together, part number three goes like this. Once again, all together from part one, now to part number three, we've got this.
into part number four, we are going to play this. Things are going to get a little bit confusing at this point. We're going to start by doing the 13th of the G, moving back to the 11th. Letting that ring out for just a moment. We're then going to play the 11th of the G again, moving back up to the 13th. And then the 14th of the D. So far. At this point, we're going to go to the 12th of the B, 14th, and then the 12th again. Once again, we're going to return to the 14th of the D, then the 11th to 13th of the G, and then again, 11 to 13. All together, part number four. And I'll just do that again. Again, all together from parts one, now to part four, we've got this. Moving into part number five, we've got this. We are going to start at the 12th of the B, going to the 14th twice. Letting the last note ring out. Afterwards, we're going to play the open B. And move over to the G string, 11th fret, going to 13 and then ring finger to the 14th of the D. We'll then do 12 to 14 to 12 on the B. So far we've got this. To finish off part number five, we're gonna to go to the 13th of the G and do two bends up. Once again, from part one to part five now, we've got this. The final part, part six, sounds like this. We're going to be starting at the 11th of the G, going over to the 13th and back to the 11th. And then we'll move over to the 14th of the D. We'll then go 12 to 14 to 12 on the B, then going back to the 14th of the D. And at this point, we're gonna shift our fingers down to the 11th of the G with our ring finger this time. And we're gonna play that, bend it up, bring it down, pull it off to the ninth, and then land at the 11th of the D. And we'll play that twice. Oh. 
all together, parts one to six, sound like this. So that concludes part number one of my lesson on Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. Tackling the introduction is probably the hardest bit of the entire song, so really well done for making it to the end of this lesson. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to leave you now with the backing track. Mm -hmm.